What's up guys, I'm Jads, I stream on Twitch, and by popular request, I wanted to show you guys the ins and outs of one of my favorite mods, Medieval Overhaul. This mod allows you to play a completely medieval colony, which is different from just a regular colony with swords and bows and arrows, let me tell you. If you haven't tried this yet, I really, really recommend it. I've been having so much fun with my medieval colonies over the past month or so on Twitch. Now, you can run a medieval colony using only vanilla expanded factions medieval instead, uh, but I prefer to combine this with medieval overhaul and a couple other medieval mods for the best experience. I'll link my full mod pack down in the video description. So before we get into it, I thought I'd just take like 60 seconds to explain why you want medieval overhaul on top of just the vanilla expanded medieval. So I'm just going to load the VE mod first on its own. So if we're just playing vanilla expanded medieval, you can see it adds one new starting scenario. Uh, and this starting scenario is pretty similar to like a tribal start, except for of course it's medieval and that you don't have very many supplies at all. Uh, you don't have like any food or anything to start out with and research is slower than usual. Then you pick your storyteller. What this mod does very well that I like is it adds this new storyteller, Maynard Medieval. If you want every faction's tech to be limited to medieval, you have to pick Maynard as your storyteller. Otherwise, you'll end up with medieval pawns from your Renegade Lord starting scenario, uh, but you'll have enemies with machine guns. If you play with the rest of the mod list I'm suggesting though, those mods cap all factions at medieval tech regardless of storyteller, so you could do like a randy medieval colony if you wanted. But real quick, just to show you guys VE medieval, I'm gonna select Maynard, pick a little landing spot, grab our six starting people, and get started. So you can see that all our starting supplies are medieval in nature. We have swords, uh, we have shields, which act as just like another level of armor that you equip. Um, we have plate armor, we have helmets, we even have some nice wine back there, 30 bottles of it, wow. And a quick look at the research tree shows us that all the research is still here. We can just not research it. Um, there's no option to research drug production, it's locked. No option to research electricity, it's locked. And then everything else requires electricity, so it's telling you the prerequisite is not completed. There is also a vanilla expanded tab with just four little things you can research specific to this mod. You can look at medieval noble apparel, which adds some fun medieval stuff. I'm especially partial to the jester costume. A heel root tree, a plague mask, which I'll talk about <laughs> In, in, a, in like 30 seconds or so, and a meat smoker. So all in all, the vanilla expanded medieval mod adds wine along with grapes, of course, enemy bases and map ruins that look a little bit more castle-y, a new wall type, which is a cobblestone wall or a low rock wall. Each tile of this requires one chunk rather than stone blocks. A new disease, the Black Plague, which is highly contagious um, and you can prevent the spread of it by wearing that plague mask. It also adds wall mounted torches. And as for weapons, it adds one melee weapon, a mace, and one ranged weapon, the heavy crossbow. For armor, it adds one new armor type, heavy plate armor, rather than just like regular plate armor with corresponding helmets. It also adds one apparel piece, a tabard, which is like a tank top uh, that is worn over armor. So, um, you know, you could use a special material or if you're playing with ideology, you could dye it at the styling station to have it kind of match your colony colors. It also adds the ability to dig moats using this dig terrain order. Uh, each time that they dig terrain, it will soften the terrain there by like one level. So, oh my gosh, no, ignore. <laughs> so uh, if you start off on regular soil, you'll become soft sand. And let's go ahead and do it again on soft sand. Uh-oh, stick to it, opossum, you got the... <laughs> ah! Oh, okay, okay, opossum. St we are so close to finishing this example for you guys though son of a gun well that's the price we pay for this tutorial video now after like five times of digging this it's finally marshy soil but the point being if you are devoted enough you can eventually end up with a nice moat around your base that's nice and medieval and of course it adds another way to produce food a meat smoker which you use by clicking choosing the ingredient insert meat and then your pawns will carry meat to it automatically and then extract it when it is done 
It's Vanilla Expanded also adds an archery target, which is a new recreation item, as well as train shooting skill, obviously. It also adds two new events or quest types. Um, one is Castle Ruins, where it's kind of like the treasure cache, and the other is Skirmish, which is like a little battle on another tile. So overall, while Capping Tech at Pre-Industrial is a major change to your game, uh, content-wise, these are pretty minor additions. It adds some great things, uh, but it doesn't immerse you in medieval times. This is where Medieval Overhaul comes in. At this point, I really want to thank one of my mods, uh, she goes by Holy Hannah on Twitch, for introducing me to Medieval Overhaul. Quick shout out to Hannah for that, because I have had so much fun with this mod on stream over the past month. Um, I don't even remember what it is like to have electricity. It's, <laughs> I'm, I'm in deep, I'm down bad for Medieval Overhaul. So I'll put a link to the mod pack that I've been using down in the video description. So first, obviously, Medieval Overhaul, that's what most of this video is going to be about. That mod adds the majority of the medieval content. You also will need deep storage to run this mod. That is a prerequisite. Um, don't be intimidated if you haven't used a storage mod before. Just go for it. You won't be sorry. Second, Vanilla Factions Expanded Medieval, obviously, and you're going to need Vanilla Expanded Framework to run that. Then we're also going to be using Rim Medieval and Rim Medieval Ice add-on, and I'll talk more about those a little bit later. So let's start. So first of all, with this mod list, you'll notice right away that I have way more starting scenarios. Now I love Battle Brothers because it gives you castle ruins in the center of your map, uh, though you do start out with no research. Renegade Lord is from Vanilla Expanded Medieval, so we already discussed that. And then Tavern Owner, I think, is probably the closest analog to the classic crash landed experience. You start off with some research, you only have three colonists, and you start off with, you know, a reasonable amount of starting supplies. So then you have your storyteller. You can pick whatever storyteller you want. You're not restricted to Maynard Medieval, uh, but we're going to go ahead and pick him because we're, you know, going full send with the medieval stuff right now. So when you're generating your world, you will also notice a new biome color. This nice green color. This is a new biome added by Medieval Overhaul called Dark Forest. Um, and it is particularly beautiful. I often have people coming into Twitch chat and asking what mod I'm using for the trees on my map because when you are in this biome, there are some new types of trees that are very cool, very big, pretty, imposing. Um, unfortunately, it is not a tree mod though, so you have to play medieval if you want to play in this type of forest. We'll go ahead and land there. And then you'll notice that all our starting colonists and options are all currently in medieval clothing already. Uh, they're not really in like suits of armor or anything. Now, if we had done the starting scenario Battle Brothers, they would all be in full suits of armor. Uh, I like that Roth is wearing a plague mask. He's coming prepared. His health is already poor. He doesn't want to take any risks. Um, we're going to go ahead and start with this group. So first off, again, we're in the beautiful dark forest. Rather majestic, is it not? Um, and you can see some really cool details, like the maps are still littered with debris, but they're medieval debris, so broken carts, which I think is really awesome. You can also see instead of packaged survival meals, we have strips of dried meat, and then our basic components look like this. So I could spend like three hours going over all of this mod, uh, but I know time is precious, especially on YouTube, so I'm going to try and go through it succinctly. Let's start by looking at the research tree. So right away, you can see that our research tree is super truncated. We cannot see anything else. Uh, this is actually thanks to Rim Medieval. So we have our stuff in the main tree. We still have our vanilla expanded medieval tab with the same items. Uh, you can see some of them are grayed out. And then we have this new research tab, our medieval research tab. And this one is a bit longer. So there is a lot of new content that these mods add, but the most important changes to actual gameplay, in my opinion, is the way that resources are produced in your colony. So I'm gonna quickly go over that. Warfare is actually not that much different than like a regular tribal playthrough. Um, it's just better because the weaponry and the armor is cooler, in my opinion. I'll go through and I'll show all the new weapons and armor that is available with this mod list. Uh, but let's look at how this changes the flow of acquiring resources first. You no longer mine metals. You mine ores and can then use a furnace to refine those ores into metal bars. That process requires coal to be input into the furnace, which is a mineable resource as well. A big thing is that you can no longer mine steel at all. You have to mine the iron ore, refine it into bars at the furnace, and then you have to research alchemy in order to unlock steel, research that, 
And then at your furnace, you can refine two iron bars into one steel bar. You can also mine salt for use in cooking and some crafting items. So basically, instead of just mining something and immediately having it at your disposal, you have a couple other steps to go through first. Textile production is also different. When you grow a cotton plant, you now harvest raw cotton and you must spin it into textile at a spinning wheel, which is something that you unlock in the medieval tab of the research tree as well. As for animal leathers, when you butcher an animal, you get meat, but you now also get fat, bones, and a pelt instead of leather. To get leather, you have to tan the pelt at a tanning rack. This in turn requires tanning liquor, which can be produced at a cooking station using various organic materials like wood. Pelts are perishable, and they'll deteriorate after a few days if you don't tan them or keep them refrigerated. You can also make rugs out of certain pelts, for example, cougar, grizzly bear, timber wolf, and so on. Animal fat is also perishable and can be rendered into tallow to fuel candles when combined with salt at a cooking station. It can also be used as a raw ingredient in cooking. Bones are a building material. You can make most structures and furniture and even items out of bones, but it's not a very strong material, so I don't recommend it. Um, it's gonna have pretty low HP. People are gonna be able to smash through it really quickly. Food production is another big thing that changes with a medieval colony since you don't have refrigeration. This mod does give you some ways to preserve food such as a drying rack and a smoker. And of course you already have that smoker if you're using vanilla expanded medieval as well. And that will produce dried meat or smoked meat, which does increase its storage time, but it doesn't make it last forever. Um, and of course you can always make pemmican. If you play with VGP vegetable garden, you can also make hard tack out of any grain, rice or corn basically, uh, which lasts for about 30 to 35 days, I feel like without refrigeration. So that's a really good option. However, if you're at all like me and you feel compelled to have, you know, seemingly quadrums upon quadrums of food stockpiled at a time, whether or not you actually do, it's about the compulsion too, then you're going to want to use the mod I mentioned earlier, Rim Medieval Ice Add-on. This adds a new mineable resource to the game, ice. In cold seasons, water freezes and you can dig ice out. The ice deteriorates slowly when above freezing temps. You can use it to build ice walls. Uh, if you build an entire room lined with ice walls, you can get the temperature pretty low. You need to keep rebuilding the walls with new ice every few days though because they're just slowly going to break down on their own. But what about during the summer months or if you aren't on a tile that gets below freezing? You can research ice curving. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to say ice carving even though it says ice curving again right here. But either way, it unlocks an item called a cellar and you know just looks like a big doors into a cellar and it's a production station that your pawn will work at to produce ice. Um, you just envision in your head that they're deep underground mining ice out of a very cold part of the earth. <laughs> it is rather time consuming and you don't get that much ice out of it. So even though, you know, maybe it's a bit OP, maybe it breaks immersion a little bit, frankly, I don't care. You can also research medieval fridge, which is basically just like an ice chest. Uh, you place items in it and they will stay frozen, but you need to refuel it with ice periodically the same way that you would refuel a campfire or a passive cooler. So again, that Rim Medieval Ice add-on is not required, uh, but personally, I really like it. Um, one more little gameplay challenge that is small, but I just want to mention it because I've been struggling with it, is that there's no prosthetics with any of these mods. Uh, peg legs, wooden hands, and feet only. So you are screwed if someone loses limbs, which has been happening to me a lot lately. Move speed wrecked forever. So basically, and probably predictably, life in general is more involved and challenging for your pawns during medieval times um, because everything takes extra steps. So now I wanna go through the rest of the awesome content that these mods, particularly Medieval Overall, adds. So in our basic research tree, once we unlock smithing, we get two new production stations. The anvil, which is a workstation to create metal weaponry and armor at, and the furnace, which is where you can refine metal ore into metal bars, plus a bunch of cute items like bellows, a grinding wheel, and a quenching bucket, and a tool rack. Uh, which you can place near these workstations to just increase production speed, similar to a tool cabinet in the base game. Then in our medieval tab, we have fruit tree sewing, which has apple trees and lemon trees. And then of course we get apples and lemons. Then you can research presser, which allows you to craft a production station called a presser, where you can make apple mints, apple juice, and cheese out of dairy. 
candle making, which allows you to manufacture tallow and then construct candle stands, which I think are so cute and just a regular little cluster of three candles that you can place on tables or wherever. These have to be refueled with tallow periodically. It adds a bunch of new plants and it locks them behind these three different levels of agriculture. Basic agriculture gives you garlic, lentils, mushrooms, and onions, along with plowed soil, which is a floor type that you can put down on top of soil. Uh, it requires no materials. It just increases the fertility to 125%. However, do not use it on rich soil because the default fertility of rich soil is 140 and plowing the soil, putting this floor type down will reduce it to 125%. It also adds a millstone which is a production station that you can use to grind certain plants down, such as wheat and sugarcane, which are unlocked in intermediate agriculture, along with carrots and herbs. Advanced agriculture unlocks cabbage, grapes, pumpkins, tomatoes, and a post uh, for viney plants to grow alongside. And then you can also research griffin berry, which is a certain type of fruit tree, just produces one type of berry that I think the ponds just really love a lot. Cooking is also split up into levels. I am so obsessed with all the different recipes that they added. Um, we got mashed potatoes, we have fried eggs, there's pumpkin pie, um, this fancy griffin berry pie. I honestly think all the new food items added um, with Medieval Overhaul are my favorite part of the mod. So these cooking tiers unlock the different recipes, whereas the grill stews and baking research unlock the different kitchen equipment required to make them so with grill you get a little grill that then you're going to use for i think they have like um yes grilled skewers grilled sausages the stew pot unlocked by stews is going to allow you to make all the soups and then the oven unlocked by baking is going to allow you to make you know bread and all those tasty looking pies food preservation of course unlocks the meat drying rack and the smoker self-explanatory. Now, rustic furniture adds some great medieval or more rustic feeling furniture, including beds made from straw, uh, leather or heavy fur, and these cozy hearths and wood stoves for heat. You can also have a cute little cup and dice game for recreation. Um, and this also unlocks the simple research bench. So prior to unlocking this, like if you start, if you do like a no research start, you can research at just a research spot. That's something that this mod adds. So if you are starting with no research, I recommend researching rustic furniture first so that you can get that research bench as soon as possible to increase your research speed. Now rustic storage is where that reliance on deep storage comes in. Um, unlocking it adds cute storage barrels, crates, and shelves. Uh, they work like stockpiles. You set what items are allowed in them and their priority. And then to see the contents, you just click it. This keeps storage rooms looking so neat and tidy. Now, carrier birds are basically just a medieval reskin of a comms console table from Vanilla, and the bird posts that you can build once you research this is the source of electricity for the scribe table. And the way that you keep it fueled is by uh, feeding the bird. So it's fueled with uh, raw ingredients. And you can actually pick one of three different birds just by rotating your bird post when you're placing it. Now, if you're playing with Rim Medieval, you will have a signal fire, and a signal fire allows you to do the same thing. It really reminds me of like the beacons of Gondor, um, so it just depends on which thing you prefer. And almost everything from that point in the research tree onward is all related to battle. The tailoring branch here unlocks different types of armor, from simple padded surcoats, to chainmail, all the way to heavy plate armor. And below, all of this is different weaponry. The modder has stated on the workshop page that this is so that you can still feel a sense of progression in the colony, going from basic weapons to military weapons to noble weapons. And you can see here just the massive variety of awesome weapons that have been added with Medieval Overhaul. At the end of the research tree, we have Alchemy, which unlocks steel, um, which is the ability to refine iron bars into steel and brewing, which allows you to make cider, ale, and wine using unfermented apple juice, wort, and grape must, respectively. You also have engineering, which is gonna unlock an advanced research bench. From here, you can research mining, creating a mine shaft, which works a little bit like the deep drill in the vanilla game. You can also research crossbows, 
arbalests, ballistas, and ballistas work a little bit like mortars in the game. They're just less powerful. Um, instead of firing a shell that explodes, um, they shoot these like heavy duty arrow looking things called a ballista bolt that you do have to manufacture separately. But once you have those, your pawn will man the ballista and you can use it to target people and things that are a little bit further away. The trebuchets are like a medieval mortar using stone chunks as their shells. However, at the time of this video, uh, trebuchets are not functioning correctly. Um, on August 12th, the dev did say in Steam that they haven't fixed it yet and will likely not be fixing it soon. Uh, this is a little bit of a bummer because this would be a really cool thing to have during Warfare, but in my opinion, it doesn't make the mod unusable or anything because there is so much other great content. Um, and I found the crossbows and the arbalests to be very powerful weapons. So honestly, who even cares? We don't even need the trebuchet. So that just about covers the entire research tree. I have so much fun with this mod. Uh, you could even combine it with like RimWorld of Magic and Magical Menagerie for an especially cozy medieval fantasy playthrough, uh, which is what I'm kind of doing on my Twitch channel right now, except I also added zombies, so I don't know how cozy it is for my pawns at least. Um, but I would love to hear your opinion on this mod or this mod pack down in the comments. Um, or if you have any questions about it, if you've been using it and you're stuck on something, feel free to ask down below and I'll take a stab at helping you out. I'd also be so interested in seeing other people's medieval bases. So feel free to tweet any screenshots you may have at me at jadspot on Twitter. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe and I will catch you guys next time.